I can't be a psychologist. Straight up, I cannot be a psychologist. I can't be a psychologist because I just don't, I, I don't know. Like in high school, I was there for people. And like my father was a, my father was a, a social worker. So, and you know, he was like the best person to freaking talk to. You see, I just feel like, you know what? This just, at this point. Now we're getting into the only Nas because y'all got me talking. Um, for those listening and watching on my YouTube, uh, I'm live right now on Twitch. And if you ain't here on Twitch, I don't know what you're doing with your life. My Twitch handle is Nastradamus, N A Z T R A D A M I X. If you're watching me on YouTube at Nas the Stampede, then you can just see it right here in the bottom. Uh, kind of want to change my thing, but no, I'll keep it like that. I'll keep it like that. So, anyways, people got me here talking about Doctor Strange 2. I watched Doctor Strange 2. And I had a blast. Ah. Uh, now, D-Player over here was expecting <laughs> 100 cameos. Expecting, I expected a lot of cameos, too. Um, but what I got was mint and I really loved it. Here's my beef with the, okay, everything in the movie is great. It had this, uh, a complete Sam Raimi feel. It had this horror element. The, the whole second act is just like a big horror element that my girl was like, why didn't you tell me there was a horror movie? And I was like, cause I wanted you to be surprised. Surprise is a horror movie, basically. <laughs> Uh, but it's the fun horror, you know, the Sam Raimi Evil Dead-ish kind of horror stuff. Um, I expected more Raimi with the with the clips, but when things got crazy, it it was it was good. Um, my beef with this movie, uh, of course, Benedict Cumberbatch did his thing. He was great as Doctor Strange. I mean, he's been in the game for long enough, so now you know you get more of a Doctor Strange than the last Doctor Strange. Also, I got to mention that before you see this movie, you should watch the first Doctor Strange, which I did. WandaVision. I say what if, even though someone came at me and was like, I ain't got to watch what if, man. There was nothing from that bullshit. There is some things from it. But if anything, you don't have to watch. You'll survive. You, you, you'll get through it by not watching it. But as a big MCU fan, I say there's nothing you shouldn't miss. Like when people say I haven't watched this or that yet, I have no sympathy for you. Like you should be on it. There's things I could understand like, oh, you you haven't caught up with that. That's cool. Like me, I, there's a lot of shows I haven't caught up with. You know, there's this shit I'm, I got in the backlog. But when it comes to MCU, especially Star Wars 2, I'm not behind a damn thing. I keep up. I watch you on a weekly basis, even though I haven't watched the Moon Knight finale yet. But that's because I watch it, you know, as a as a group with with the family here. Now, on that regards, no sympathy for you. If you haven't kept up with the MCU stuff, then that's on you. You should be watching all the fucking shows and stuff like that. It's like when when No Way Home came out, Spider Man and Daredevil showed up, and then now people started watching Daredevil series. Like, where were you years ago? You should have watched that. Should have been the fuck. I spent a whole weekend when those shit came out watching it. But I get it. People don't get it. Weekends like, that. look, what I'm trying to say is keep up. So uh, you should watch those and Spider-Man No Way Home and then you should be good. Um, with that, you're set. Movie's good. Now my beef. America Chavez. Love the character, you know, she's a powerful girl and she is, uh, she, what's the word I'm looking for? She, um, considers herself or, or profiles herself as Puerto Rican. Fantastic. Now this movie doesn't emphasize that. 
she's Puerto Rican or anything like that. Just that she's from another universe, which she is. But I had some beef with the casting as well because I was like, okay, well, now you got a Mexican American playing her, right? With a really Mexican name. And I'm like, all right, whatever, cool. Uh, as long as it's still being portrayed as is. But the thing is, it's not. It's still, you know, you get the sense of a Mexican. And then I saw this video on TikTok where they basically saying America Chavez is Mexican. And now I'm like, we can't have anything. You know, I I just, I want representation. I've been talking about this for a long ass time. That's why Miles Morales is important to me because he's freaking, you know, Afro Boricua. But a lot of people just label him as African American, and it's like it's cool because you know he's both. But I just you know we want because there's more of that Puerto Rican thing there. But he's like he's like me, where it's like like we're Puerto Rican, but we don't like fucking throw it in your face that we're Puerto Rican. Like I don't even got a Puerto Rican flag back here, you know. I don't got nothing Puerto Rican. <laughs> I got the Puerto Rican boxing gloves in my car and Puerto Rican T-shirt. That's it. I don't go hard. If you go to my mom's crib, it's basically flags everywhere, bro. It's just like the wallpapers are just flagged at that point. It's just, it's there in your face. But I'm just saying, I want some representation. You know, I want, and America Chavez was one of us. But it's not there. And now it's just, I don't know. So that's my thing. I probably get attacked for it or whatever, but. Okay, now, with that being said, Shoshit, I believe her name is, Shoshit Gomez is playing America Chavez. She's a Mexican-American playing what is supposed to be a Boricua, a Puerto Rican character. Not Puerto Rican descent, really, because she came from another universe, but she was raised in New York by Puerto Ricans, so she labeled herself part of that community. Puerto Rican pride is no joke. We fucking serious about this shit. Now, you got Bad Bunny, who was announced to be playing El Muerto for Sony's Spider-Man universe shit. And I was like, yo, that's what's up. That's cool. And I find it funny because it's like, okay, now you got a Puerto Rican who's playing a Mexican-American character in the comics or Mexican character. But hey, maybe they could flip it and make it into a Puerto Rican character. This is why I'm very adamant that Marvel go and... Get on the White Tiger character. White Tiger Marvel, right? Because I believe the White Tiger character is a Puerto Rican descent. The powers of Ava Ayala, which is a Puerto Rican name. White Tiger come from the White Tiger amulet. Blah, 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 blah. White Tiger. Ah, shit. They don't really talk about anything here. All right, that's that's in the fandom. What what about the Wikipedia? Here we go. There you go. Hector Ayala was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico. You see what I'm saying? White Tiger. You get White Tiger to go against Black Panther, and you got a fucking great shit. But that's what I'm saying. Like White Tiger. Now, if they cast White Tiger as some other fucking Mexican American, I'm gonna be very very upset because I'm like, no, let him be. A fucking put. It's like, this, you you know, here, look, hear me out, right? It's like Black Panthers made, but they cast a freaking uh, Spanish black dude. Like, pure Spanish black dude. So he's like, no. Or what if they cast it like Robert Downey Jr. playing a black dude as Black Panther? Actually, that would have worked for me, too, man, because that guy can do no wrong. You know what? We'll just we'll just leave it at that. What fucking ass show up tomorrow? Take off your shirt and be like, "I'm your white tiger, baby." Yup, I gotta get ripped though. I gotta get ripped. Anyway, that's 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 what I'm saying. Now it's just now it's I feel like it's tainted. Like people know America Chavez as just this Mexican character, and you know it was. I have a lot of I have a lot of love for that. I don't have love for that character's comic book run because it was god awful. I'm not the only one who thinks so. You can look this up. God awful. I read it and I was just like, this is god awful. So I'm mad that that happened for her. She deserves more. 
but outside of her own comic book run, she's dope as hell. Uh, so I got beef with that and beef with the fact that so many people are behind Wanda and her decisions. Other than that, I really enjoyed the movie. I thought the cameos was um perfect as it is. Um, sure, more would have been nice. I wish the what if was more involved in it, you know, um, but it's not. Uh, just some of it is like it's a good backstory for some people or some knowledge of alternate Doctor Strange's, but uh. And references, but I think it was. I think I think it was really, really fun, really dope movie, and um, leading to whatever's to come. But people are starting to like. Saw a video on YouTube, and some guy was like, "I say like a lot, so I apologize." Some guy said he was done with the MCU because there's just now they're just drawing on nostalgia, and he blames. He's saying that Spider Man uh, No Way Home is basically just fire because of nostalgia. And I felt attacked. Uh, um, dude, why are you attacking this movie? Like, do you, you see, I said like again. Why are you attacking this movie? You don't want it to be what it was? Because I think it was freaking amazing what it was. I think. The majority of people think it's freaking amazing what it is. So you mad that they took his whole history and brought it in there and pretty much set up for his future. It was it was good. It was fucking creative. Movies are supposed to be fun and creative. We're talking comic book, fictional characters. This is how a comic book will run, period. That's why I say people need to keep up because it's like when you read a comic book, I said, like, again, it's like, fuck. It's, it is when you read a comic book and you have to follow all this other comic book runs to understand what's going on. Granted, you could just read that one comic book and it has a little hyphen in the bottom or a little note in the bottom. It's like, this happened in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy crossover with blah 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 blah. you're like huh well just imagine what the hell that was about <sighs> only like one cameo that thing that came with it I... that was great i like the other cameo because those were the rumors and it came to be whether that continues is the question you know that's the question this is just this is all just a one-off then, all right, cool, it was fun. But if this is a continuation that the 616 characters actually is those characters, then that would be cool. All I gotta say is go out there and watch freaking Doctor Strange 2. And also, Sonic 2 is out there on the web, HD quality. I ain't saying to go look for it. I'm just saying it's out there. I was on TikTok at work. And then somebody was streaming and I was like, oh shit. So next thing you know, I'm watching Sonic 2 and it's a fucking Blu-ray quality. And I'm like, oh shit. They cut it off somewhere towards the third act, but it was, <laughs> it was dope. So I was like, I'm going to look for it. I said like again, I'm going to look for it online. And sure enough, I did. Uh, I don't have a copy. I'm not saying I got a copy. I just know that I could see it online. Tomorrow, the Uncharted movie comes out and I'm going to buy it finally watch it because i collect shit like that even when morbius comes out i'm gonna buy it because i collect movies like that i don't give a shit and i'll finally watch it i never seen it <sighs> oh shit i didn't notice that king diabetes the, the first latin american marvel character apparently is the white tiger you know there's another character though he's called el uh gigante he the uh, el gigante and he showed up, and I have the comic book, but I have the comic book in uh in my phone actually. Vejigante, there you go, El Vejigante, and he's a Puerto Rican hero, like legit Puerto Rican hero, like he <laughs> say like a lot. He's based off the Vejigante, which is, and I don't want to murder this, so I'm gonna look it up. Vejigante, there it is. 
uh, Vejigante is a fork folklore character in Puerto Rican festival celebrations, mainly seen during carnival time. Traditional colors of Vejigante were green, yellow, and red, or red and black. Today, Vejigante is were brightly colored ornate masks corresponding to colors of the costume and detailed bat-like wings. So it's just something that they wear during the festival, and then you could get really creative with it. There was actually a kaiju in what's that movie called that is fucking amazing pacific rim called the vejigante because he was based on this itself the vejigante all right so i'm gonna show you right i'm gonna show you real quick real quick for those of you that are here with me i'm gonna show you real quick all right so over here god damn it this thing is just all over the place the screen is too big, man. The fucking screen is too big, man. All right. Bam. Vejigante. This right here, that's a Vejigante mask. These right here, whole bunch of Vejigante masks. Those are really whack ones, though. But you can get creative with the way the Vejigante mask look like. You know? Bam. You see this? That's kind of cool. And then Pacific Rim had a Vejigante monster. See the likeness? His face? It has a Vejigante. Now, this hero, El Vejigante Marvel, this is him right here. This is what he looked like. He's some dude, uh, Miguel Rodriguez, uh, son of Puerto Rican independent, independentista, Miguel Rodriguez went in against his parents' wish and enlisted in the U.S. Army after 9-11 while in Iraq. Rodriguez's squad was hit by an IED, resulting in the death of everyone except Rodriguez and the sergeant. When a series of RPGs came down, Rodriguez panicked and ran, leaving his sergeant to die as well. After returning to Puerto Rico, Rodriguez turned to alcohol in order to deal with his guilt and PSD. PTSD until one night a mysterious figure visited him offering redemption, kind of like Ghost Rider. The figure revealed that he was the latest in the line of protectors of Puerto Rico and he has chosen Rodriguez to be his successor, kind of like Moon Knight. The figure bestowed his powers upon Rodriguez and he became El Vejigante, protector of Puerto Rico, vowing to be a better hero than his soldier. Now, this character is only stuck. So this character is only. I w make sure you guys wake up when I play this music. Just waking your ass up because I'm probably boring you with all this geek talk. Uh, but yeah, he's just a character that's just stuck in Puerto Rico to protect it and shit like that. So, see what I'm saying? Like, we got characters out there and I want them to be represented. America Chavez was finally added to the MCU. And I'm not, I don't think she's being represented well enough. I'm not saying a Mexican can't play a Puerto Rican. Hell, Al Pacino played a Cuban and we accepted. Hell, Razor Ramon played a Latino and we accepted him. I'm saying do it well. So there was no talk about her being Puerto Rican, but a lot of how she represented herself was Mexican. And then now people are labeling her as such. It's kind of fuck, you know, but that's my only beef. Um, Doctor Strange 2 was fun. That was a fun ride. I had a blast. People were kind of pissed off with the after credits. I think it was hilarious. But you got to be a Sam Raimi fan to really dig it. <laughs> this guy said, do that randomly through the stream to scare people. Nah, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not going to do that. So that's kind of my two cents without really like spoiling the shit out of it because I don't want to. I don't want to spoil shit for people. Other just, you know, it's a fun movie that just really because the whole multiverse thing is it. This is it. And it started off. Not really it just started off. Actually, when you watch Doctor Strange, the first one, it already stated we're warriors and we get our powers from the multiverses 
and we are defenders of the multiverse. It was something I didn't pay attention to back then. So they already put that in there. And then little by little, they were giving us hints of multiverses. Like when Ant-Man went into the quantum realm, that's like another multiverse or something. Uh, and what really stapled it was, well, then you have Spider-Man Far From Home that play with this whole like, hey, they're multiverses. But before that, then you had Avengers Endgame that played with the true multiverses because there were different timelines. Those are multiverses. <laughs> And you got the Loki series that really sets up what's going down right now. And everything in the Loki series at the end is the cause of why things are happening now in the multiverse. Why multiverses are unstable and we can fucking just, they just cross over. <sighs> Probably, I'm going off on a tangent, but you know. I just, it's something that I, I, I'm passionate, I love about it, shit like that. Oh, for those who are watching this video right now, you know, this podcast, and notice the freaking Goku shirt I'm wearing right now, it's because I'm doing a special thing this month in my fan chamber on my Twitch stream where I'm watching anime, and I thought it would be cool if I started wearing anime stuff, so for this week... I'm busting out this Dragon Ball shit because I don't wear it since like 2003. I haven't worn this bitch, really. It's just been hanged up the whole time. But it's so fucking fresh. Like, truly, like, if you just hang your clothes, so fucking fresh. We are gonna watch Lesbian Batter Strippers and shit. Yes, Project Aiko is like, I'm, I'm, for, for real, this. Enter the anime chamber month. It's just going to be straight up fucking old school animes that I watch. They're fucking fantastic. Maybe some new ones. I don't know. I know people want me to watch series. I don't think I got time to watch a whole fucking series on here. So scrap that out the book. I don't want to start something and then just watch like two episodes of it. Let's see. No, I can't watch the rest. Or I'm not going to be. I'm not going to watch the rest on here. I watch it on my own time kind of stuff. No, even my crazy ass was like, hey, man, wouldn't it be cool if I just start rewatching One Piece on fucking live stream and people will be watching it with me? But people ain't going to keep up. <laughs> Project Echo 1 through 200. Sadly, they didn't make that. They didn't make that many, but it'll be good. So that's just to explain to the freaking people listening to this podcast right now that I'm just wearing geeky shit to wear geeky shit. I don't really have anything else. To speak about, um, I guess I could talk. I mean, my whole work schedule changed, so I be I'm like Sundays and Wednesdays. I'm working from noon all the way to eleven o'clock at night. That's my work schedule, Sunday and Wednesdays. Every other day, I'm I get out like six thirty, noon to six thirty. Except today, when we had to stay there a little bit more because of a flight deferred, and came to our airport because I didn't want to go to Minneapolis because apparently it's fucking like crazy over there right now like weather wise I'm like quit being a bitch just fucking go but you know they came for like an hour and then they left and shit so I didn't leave at 6 30 this time like 7 30 7 40 have you seen the black air force round table videos a youtuber named DJ the champ made a round table of anime the worst of the worst characters of anime I have not I have not was I don't know I can't think of any like what was the worst anime I've seen I think one was called uh Samurai Gun and I was like what the fuck was this it was fucking it was lame I think Scooby had the DVDs it's booty you know what would be dope Grenadier if I can fucking find Grenadier bruh Cause I'll just keep it going. <laughs> I'll just keep it going with fucking hot, sexy girl animes all month. If you guys want me to. Bruh, if I can find Grenadier, like I have Grenadier. On a CD somewhere. Cause I downloaded this shit. In high school. I believe. Or after high school. Don't remember. 
but I did do an AMV of it. And it, it was basically Trigun with boobs. All I'm saying, it's Trigun with boobs. Real cool f- shooting, real cool uh, uh, gunfights with big boobs physics. That's the best way I could explain it. Like, there was a badass Gunkata fight at the end, and it involved the boobs. And it was just amazing, you know, like, ah, I don't know how else to explain it. This shit is banging. (sighs) Can I find that online anywhere? It seems like I can. I'm I'm trying to look right now. Maybe on YouTube. It looks like I could find it on YouTube. They don't live level big boobs. So this could be a possibility. So I made, I made hella AMVs back in the day. I made hella, I made a dope ass outlaw star AMV. I made like two Naruto ones. I made three Avatar The Last Airbender AMVs, which is the first thing I got uh, I got striked for on YouTube. When YouTube started cracking down on videos because of Viacom. Viacom took down my last Airbender AMVs. I did not. See? I did not use a single a single Linkin Park song. I did not. And I know you guys are there thinking, oh, this motherfucker made MVs. He used Linkin Park for sure because everybody and their mama did. But I did not. Ha ha. I didn't follow the trope. I didn't follow the cliche. I stepped outside the box. I'm a big Linkin Park fan. I bumped Linkin Park till the day they ended. The day he died. You know, I... I didn't even use point or third. <sighs> you fucked me up. Point of a third authority. I didn't use any Linkin Parks. I don't think. No. Because I didn't want to step in that. Because it was overdone. It was overdone. I'm not going to use something that's been done over and over and over again. There were some really dope. Linkin Park AMVs, boy. I remember the one that really sticks out to me was the one with uh, the the Trunks movie, you know, and and they used the um, fuck. Which one did they use? Then you know the one that boop 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 burn burn. I forgot which one that was. <laughs> I forgot what track that is. You know, beep beep beep, buddy. Oh man! You know, I walked in the moon today to the cold of the silence and put my cold feet on the floor. I forgot about yesterday and remember and remember things that I think that were not anymore. A little taste of hypocrisy, and I'm left in the wake of the mistake, slow to react, and even though you're so close to me, you're still so distant, and I can't bring you back, and then, you know, fucking Chester comes out of nowhere, it's like, it's true the way I feel, the, the. okay, I'm not gonna do anymore, but, um, <laughs> it was a really good mating call, you know what the fuck I'm talking about, with you, there you go, with you, that one, it was with you, Dragon Ball, Trunks, AMV, that was my shit, but yeah, Linkin Park was really, so anyways, I made AMVs, they're really dope, they're fucking crazy, my favorite, of course, is that Outlaw Star one I told you about, because it's not really a anime music video, as more it's Oh, anime movie trailer mashup because I took Outlaw Star and I mashed it up with the trailer to Star Star Trek, the first Star Trek movie, <clears throat> and I made a really fucking beautiful thing. So yeah, back in the day, I used to do a lot of AMVs. It's dope. I miss Linkin Park as well. Um, I love all their albums. It was, you know. I had a chance to finally go see them. And sadly, Chester Bennington took his own life before I was able to. And it was literally like 
two or three months until I had to see them live for the first time, finally, something like that. So, you know, I would never, I would never get to experience that. And it sucks. It really does suck. But, um, you know, what sucks more is that he's not with us anymore. And there's no more. Oh, I remember this one. <laughs> I truly do remember this one. I think I remember this one. <laughs> I think I remember this one. People did go, <laughs> People did go hard on fucking <laughs> Linkin Park back in the day. <laughs> what can you say? Damn it. That just I just saw something right here. And it was like it reminded me I didn't catch up with the Halo. So, what was I talking about that led to AMVs? <laughs> I totally forgot. Anyways. Hybrid theme 20th anniversary album two years ago. You know, it's funny you say that because here it is. <laughs> Here's their 20th anniversary edition hybrid theory two disc fucking CD. Now, funny story. When I ordered this, I thought it was a vinyl. So to my surprise, when it arrived, and it's a CD. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I was hoping it would be the vinyl. Unfortunately, the vinyl is fucking expensive as hell. So, um, there you go. I got their fucking 20th anniversary hybrid theory. <laughs> But it's stuff that you could listen to on Spotify, like I said. So this really is useless to me. So I guess it's just a collector's item because I can't. I don't really have a CD player at all. Not even my car has a CD player. If my car had a CD player, I would have bumped it in my car. But I don't have a CD player. Should I get a CD player now just so I could play this? Or if I hold on to this long enough, will it have major value? You tell me. You tell me. I was such a Linkin Park fanboy. Still am. Still am. Actually, recently I listened to a lot more Linkin Park than before. It's crazy. So, um, yeah, I don't know what else to talk about. I forgot where my. I just forgot where my tangent was. Oh, I was talking about Grenadier. I made an MV with Grenadier. That's what I did. I'm going to show you guys Grenadier. Grenadier is really good. And it's really short. Grenadier is only like six. Six or 12 episodes. I forgot. It's really, 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 really fucking short. And I wish I could also show you another anime that I consider one of my favorites that no one really knows about or seen. Called Salty Ray. And I have... The DVD of it. That'll be much better if I could see it somewhere else. Funimation has it? You bullshitting. Funimation has it? I just ended my fun. Oh, not available in my country. Oh, you see, little bitch. I was about to say, I just ended my Funimation. Amazon Prime Video got it. I buy the whole season for $38.99. Get the fuck out. It the fuck? That shit better be on sale one day. It'd be kind of easier because my DVD is, like, I tried to watch it one night and I couldn't skip because it, it was just burnt itself or some shit. I couldn't skip it. So I tried to skip it and I couldn't skip it, so. But Salty Ray is a really good one. And, yeah. That's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> I'm your motherfucking boy, Bruce Nolan. <laughs> Saying good fight, good night. No, that's not true. That's not true at all. I got nothing, guys. I had my conversation. I'm pretty much conversationed out. Tired. But I could mention this. Um, what? <laughs> it's kind of funny. What would you think? I'm throwing this out there. 
an idea. What would you think if I held a stand-up special right here on my Twitch? Be the first ever stand-up special live on Twitch. And let me tell you something. I am not a stand-up comedian at all. I don't think I am. I don't think I can do it at all. A lot of people say I should. You should do stand-up. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't understand. Like, those guys are masters of their craft. I don't understand I can go on. I could get in front of a stage and I can sing karaoke, no problem, no fucking problem. If my stand up is like this, then no fucking problem. We're just starting to realize these guys who are doing their stand ups now that are, uh, social media comedians or whatever the fuck you want to call them. What what's Social figure. What's what's the fucking term for people who are you know popular off of fucking just like TikTok and all this bullshit? Like these guys are going out there. They're selling fucking venues, doing stand up. But when I see them, they're not really doing like stand. Well, at least the clips I see is not no. It's not bits. It's just them talking to the crowd. You know, and reacting to that and coming up with jokes from that alone, which I think is an easy task, really. Well, not really. I can't go up there. I ain't gonna go up there and be like, hey, excuse me, what's your name? What's your name? Caroline. Caroline. Caroline, from where? Massachusetts. I can't even say Massachusetts. You know, like I don't I don't know how to do that. When we had panels, that was fucking fantastic too, because I couldn't talk to people like that and I made them laugh. You know, just from conversation, but I think it's just considered like a normal kind of conversation. Uh, and plus, when I'm with my guys, when I'm with the boys, my crew, my family, I have a bigger freaking sense of confidence. You know, I could tackle anything. It's a different me, different me from what you see here to what I am with my girl, what I am with my family or like my mom. What I am at work is basically how I am right here. I'm over there screaming at motherfuckers, doing stupid shit and doing stupid jokes. I don't know. I just thought it would be like, imagine, you know, it just, it just it starts. I stand up. I'm not going to sit down. I literally stand up with the mic and I'll just wing it. Well, not wing it. I mean, that's, I'm actually like trying to write down like some conversation types and shit like that. but. I don't know. I thought it'd be cool. It'd be funny. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. You know, I'm like, bam, one stand up bit, whatever it takes, like 30 minutes to an hour, something shit like that. Just fuck it. You know, and hopefully I could get a, a late night comedy show one night. <laughs> uh, let's have a, our next guest come down. He comes, he tries to sit on the chair, but then I have someone just pull the chair out and they just fall. <laughs> Some Eric Andre kind of shit. Can't do that. I don't want people coming after me trying to beat my ass unless I have a big ass security guard. So like if I do it and there's like I got this big swole motherfucker right next to me and shit, you know, the drum beat your ass like do it. Fucking do it. That's what I thought. Sit down. I'm going to ask you some questions about this movie. You don't sound like you don't even fucking like. But going on the side note, Alessa Bliss returned in the WWE. I saw that. She still had her little doll. And I was like, shouldn't have brought that back. No reason for you to have that back. If you had just came back as a lesser bliss, we would have all forgot her. We could have left that behind. Could left that behind. That's too much time to. That's too much tied to the fiend, and it hurts. Just see that because you're like, I miss the fiend, and your character doesn't look like that needs to exist anymore. So you should just left that behind. But that's just my first inter interpretation of seeing what the fuck happened. We'll see how they go. Randy got to get swole. I mean, Randy could probably push a motherfucker. Scooby's my muscle. <laughs> Scooby's my goddamn muscle. Anyways, we're going to end this only now so we can get it to Project Echo. Project Echo is 
I need to watch these last two. Uh, the weather here in Chicago has got really, really good. It was like in the 70s today, but windy, so it felt good. It was hot, but breezy. Oh, it's the perfect combination, man. I fucking love it. Like, if you go outside right now, so fucking great. I went outside in shorts. I was like, beautiful. That was so good. I'm happy for that. I'm happy, happy for that. Yesterday, I was stuck at work until like 11, but because I got the peacock, I was able to watch, and that sounded like a sexual thing, but I was able to watch uh, WrestleMania Backlash, which I think they should have just left the WrestleMania part out of there and just called it Backlash. There's no reason to call it WrestleMania Backlash. It's like, no, it's not WrestleMania 2.0, motherfucker. Like, we don't need that. It's just Backlash. Like, it's the Backlash to WrestleMania. You didn't have to fucking... Specify it's a WrestleMania backlash. You should just like backlash. It's just the backlash to WrestleMania. <sighs> just... Pulled out my peacock at work. <laughs> That's how I do it. That's how I do it. And on that note, thank you, everybody. You might want to watch your eardrums now, though, because I'm about to make this motherfucker go hard. That's it for the freaking Only NAS podcast, which I'm kind of like two weeks behind now. <laughs> but I'm um, thank you for being here. And of course, if you're listening to me right now, you can watch this live and everything else I do live at freaking Nastradamus on twitch.tv. And that's N A Z T R A D A M I X. And for those of you watching me on NASA Stampede, thank you very much for being here. If you're avid viewers, then you're the shit. If you're a new viewer, hi, how you doing? Say hi to your mother for me. Thank you for being here. Everything you need to know is down here on these links. Follow me on Twitter. And uh, that's also my Instagram handle. And also my TikTok. Please. Follow me on TikTok. I want to stream there, but I need to have a whole lot of fucking people. So help me help you help me. Follow me on TikTok. I put some good stuff up there as well, you know. Or I try. You never know. You never know what I put up there. <laughs>